Okay, so the last section is on logistic growth model. So you don't have to memorize this logistic growth model, but you do need to be able to work with something that has this form. Okay, so a logistic growth model is a function written in this form, c over 1 plus a times e to the negative bt, where a, b, and c are positive constants. And so this can also be used to talk about population. So we'll see in example five, we have the population of California. So number five says the population of California, P of T, which is given in millions, can be approximated by the logistic growth function, this P of T, so this tells us how many people are in California, where T is the number of years since the year 2000, round to the nearest 10th of a year. Okay, so the first thing it says is determine the population in the year 2000. So we want to find the population. So we want to find P when the year is 2000. So we have to consider, okay, what's our time going to be that we're plugging in? The thing we plug in is the number of years since 2000. So when we're in the year 2000, the number of years since 2000 is zero. So we want to find P of zero. So we plug in zero into our formula. Okay, and anything raised to the zero is just one. So when we divide these two, we should get 34, and our answer is in millions. So the population is 34 million people in California in the year 2000. Okay. Part B says, use this function, so the function given here, to determine the time required for the population of California to double from its value in 2000. All right, so we want to find the time, that's what we're looking for, that it takes for the population to double. Okay, so we're going to use this, but our population amount is going to be 2 times its original. So 2 times 34, right, is our function. Okay. All right. So now what's our goal? We need to solve for t. How are we even going to do that? All right. So it's a bunch of things are happening. This t is in the exponent here and we need to isolate it. However, this exponent is in the denominator. I don't like that. So I am going to multiply both sides by this thing. All right. So 2 times 34 is 68. I'm just going to use that. So 68, I'm going to multiply by this. Okay. All right, I'm, again, I'm trying to get T by itself, so I need to undo everything that's happening. So the next thing that's happening is this whole thing is being multiplied by 68. I'm going to divide by 68. Let's see if this is something nice. Um, 95.2 divided by 68, 1.4, I can work with that. So we have that 1 plus 1.8 times e to the negative 0 0.018t is 1.4. All right, now what do we need to do to solve for t? We need to isolate this exponential. So first, I'm going to subtract by 1, or subtract 1 from both sides. Then 
Then I'm going to divide by this 1.8. This one nice, uh, 0.4 divided by 1.8. No, it's not nice, so I'm not going to use this rounded decimal. I'm going to leave it as the fraction. Okay. All right, so again, trying to solve for t. What do I need? It's in the exponent. I need to get it out of the exponent. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Okay. All right, and then finally I can divide by that negative 0.018. So we put this in our calculator and we get that time is 83.6 years. All right, so we have all of the techniques we needed to do this. All right, so here's an interesting question. Um, part C, it says, what is the limiting value of the population of California under this model? What does that even mean? Okay, limiting value. We've never used this word. Limit is a calculus word, but we can understand what it means from this class. All right, basically it means what happens when T, the time, gets bigger and bigger. So after longer periods of time. So what happens when t gets bigger and bigger? Well, let's see exactly what happens. We're going to use the function that we were given. Okay. All right, so the thing that I notice is we got this e to the negative exponent. Well, when we, we, excuse me, when we have negative exponents, that means we need to actually make a fraction or flip a fraction we already have. So I'm going to rewrite this as a fraction. I think that's going to help us out a little more. So now I don't have to worry about that negative exponents, exponent. Okay, well let's think about this. If time gets bigger and bigger, what happens to this exponential function? So think about e, which is 2.7. Is this going to be a growth or an increasing exponential or is it a decreasing exponential? This is an increasing one. So this thing gets bigger. When time gets bigger. All right, but note that it's in the denominator of a fraction. Do we remember what happens to a fraction when a denominator gets bigger? The whole fraction gets smaller. All right, and in fact, it actually goes to zero. So what happens here? What we have, 95.2 over one plus this fraction, this whole fraction is gonna to go to zero, so that means we have 95.2 divided by one plus zero, which is gonna to go to 95.2.
million. So that's as big as our population in California could get under this model. All right, so make sure that you are able to do all of the things in this video. And if you have questions about anything or if anything was confusing, make sure you ask me about it in class. All right, see you later.